Hey guys, I'm here with Aljamain Sterling, former UFC bantamweight champion. Now he's moved up to the featherweight division, and he's got a real tough test ahead of him with Mavsar Ivalev. I just want to get your first thoughts on him, like you know, just in general. How do what do you what do, how do you grade his wrestling? Because we all know you for your wrestling and your grappling. Where, where would you put him? Would you put him mid tier, top tier? What do you, how do you see him? I would say he's top tier. He's he's solid. Um, he's not doing anything overly crazy. He's just very good with controlling and mat returning. Um, I like to think his last opponent gave him a pretty good run, it gave him a good push, and he's not really known for his wrestling. So I, I think this is a mix for a very interesting fight with my style versus his. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you brought up his old opponent. He trains with me, yeah, yeah. and uh, he did his training camp with us, and we taught him the Granby in three months' time. And I was wondering, one of the questions I had ready for you was, it, did you look at that fight and think of like, oh, if he can't even hold on a guy who hasn't trained very long, how is he going to hold me down? And do you see a path to his back? Because uh, you know that our team at TriStar, we picked you to win in this fight a lot because of your path to the back. Is that something that you have in the back of your head that maybe you can out grapple him? I definitely think I can out grapple him, but part of me really wants to stand up and strike in this one. So uh, it really just depends on what he decides to do. Um, I plan on going right at him in the beginning of the first bell and just kind of seeing what type of fight he wants to have and we'll kind of just play it out from there but I think if I get an opportunity to take his back I definitely will and uh, really test his ground game from all angles not just takedowns and defense and standing back up and escaping uh, but I thought Arnold Allen fought a phenomenal fight I even mentioned it to him at the PI when I saw him um, there's a couple of things that he should have followed up with that I think someone who's had more experience would be able to to know so I think that leaves a lot of hopefulness for me like okay He's good, but he's human, like any one of us. He could be beaten. Yeah, of course. And uh, one thing that also happened in the fight was he uh, actually dropped Arnie with a jab. You know, I don't know if you thought, was it because Arnie was stepping or you think he has that power of Mofsar? Because he's not much known for his finishing. I mean, are you worried about getting finished is what I'm trying to get around to. Not so much, but it's a fist fight. Anything can happen. I think he dropped Arnold because Al Arnold was going forward into the impact. And Mofsar does a good job of striking going backwards, but... Uh, he doesn't really get guys to run that committed into it to where he was able to drop Arnold Allen. Uh, so I think that was the difference with that. It's kind of very reminiscent of when Marlon Marais is throwing a body kick and I'm shooting right into it, or when O'Malley is stepping back and I'm running right into his fist. He's not known to come forward and drop guys just by going forward like that. Um, but, you know, can't disrespect his power by any means. You just never know. He might be more willing to commit because he might not fear the striking on my end. And I think the same thing about him. He might not fear the striking about me coming back on his end. So he, I think the fans are in for a good surprise with this. Yeah, of course. Listen, I, you're a very entertaining fighter. You know, I, I mean, I love it. I appreciate wrestling and grappling, you know. And obviously, you know, not a lot of MMA fans have come across to that. But luckily for this one, uh, we have Kai on the, on, the main, on the main card. And he brings a lot of Japanese fans. And one thing I was talking to with some of my teammates is that the Japanese fans really appreciate grappling. And like you can tell when you're watching events in Japan how much they clap for jiu-jitsu and wrestling uh, exchanges. And do you think this is an opportunity for, for you to garner Japanese fans because they're going to be tuning in to watch this card? Uh, 100%. I've been to Japan to corner one of their own, Uka Sasaki, who also fought Kai Asakura. He was the one. He Kai actually beat him um, pretty convincingly. So it was kind of cool to just be out there outside of the loss. But uh, I know how they are when it comes to watching the sport. Very respectful appreciative of everything, every single art, and uh, they give you a standing ovation no matter what. Yeah. And I know like uh, this placement on the card kind of icked you a little bit or whatever, but you know, obviously you're a former champion, you're, you're super famous, and I think people are still gonna come in in tune just to watch you. And then there's a possibility that you may even get garner more views in terms of like being it on Fight Pass or on the prelims. So I was just wondering like, would you have a message to to say that like, this is gonna be the last time we see you on this prelim thing? Or, or is there something you wanna, you wanna tell the fans? Um, I mean, if there's anything I want to say is hopefully this is the last time. I think this is going to be a really entertaining fight, and I think uh, think a lot of people don't really know which way it's going to go if they think we're just going to be hugging for 15 minutes, but I can guarantee you it's going to be a lot more than that. It's going to be way more action-packed, and uh, you're in for a treat for this one. Cool. That's Aljamain Sterling. Thank you for coming on and doing the show. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.